Right, let's make a tie from the 1500s. Right then, for this tie, I just need basically a scrap of wood. I think this is a piece of oak that's been sitting on the shelf here for years. Uh, I just need to square it up. So over to the bandsaw. And the reason I'm showing you the bandsaw is that video I did on the quick way to sharpen. I haven't sharpened, I haven't touched this bandsaw since. And I've got quite a lot of stuff on it. So just have a look and see how good it's still good. As you can see, it's still cutting beautifully. Right, uh, we'll get over to the lathe now and get started on this, and I'll then tell you what it is. Right now, in the lathe, I have a piece of oak. It's roughly four by four by two and a half, right? And what I'm gonna make is, as I said, it's a tie from the 1500s, and depending on where you're from, depends on what it's called. In Ireland, it was called a button spinner. I think in America, it was called a whirly gig, I think, right? Um, but it's, it's a really old tie. If you haven't seen one before, they're really simple to make. They're great fun, right? Now, there's a lot of variations on this, and I'll show a few of the variations at the end, and I'll show what they do, right? But for this, for the video, I'm just gonna make a simple one because you just wanna get the idea of how to make it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is round this off, and uh, then we can get on with it. And I'm also gonna put a tenon on one end of it because I need to go into a chuck. Right then, it's in the chuck, it's rounded off and it's faced off, right? Now, there's a few tricks to this that make them really easy, right? What you're looking for is the whip of whatever your big jaws are, these are foreign jaws. So I just wanna make sure that I'm gonna cut a circle that will go inside those so jaws. I have this set. That's the overall size I want. Right, so I'm gonna cut down to that. Right, now as I said, these are really simple. They're easy, they're quick. And they've been around a long time. Now how this came about was, uh, I was talking to my son, those that don't know, I have a 10 year old son, uh, one of my kids, and he was asking me about the toys I used to play with as a kid, and I was telling him about these, and uh, I, explained to what they, I explained to him what they were and stuff, and he asked me could I make him one, and uh, I said yeah, no problem. So I made him one, and then I said, I wonder if there's a video on this, and I wasn't. So I'm just gonna do a video. Right, now, what's important here is, you must mark the center of this. Right, you only need a little dot, right? But you need to mark the center of this, where it's spinning, right? Now, sometimes, I've done a few of these, Sometimes that dot will stay, sometimes I'm gonna have to remark it. It depends, right? And all I want to do is cut a slight curve from there. I just want to curve the curve the edge, that's all.
right that'll do it just any sort of little curb there just to make it look nice right now i'm going to sand that and finish it right and uh i'll be back for the yorkshire grip bit it's a really quick one this week because of the size of this thing right and um, it's going on from the last one between the melisands and the two of them two of they done it right so i'm going to do this and i'll be right back very quickly actually all right now yeah, just doing the yorkshire grit and as i said it's going to be a quick yorkshire grip bit this week because it's only a small piece i'm doing right now continue on now, not long after the Melisans arrived in Ireland, on two of day, Dannon disappeared for good. Now, there's a few theories or legends on where they went and what happened. But in the mall, they were basically defeated by the Melisans, right? One of the legends states that on two of day, Dannon didn't fight the Melisans at all. That because of their foretelling skills, the way they, their magic that they could see into the future kind of thing, right? Uh, that they were going to lose the country anyway. And they were going to lose the battle. So instead, they built uh, their own kingdom under several hills around Ireland. Right? Basically, they went underground. Now... Uh, it is said that they built them long before the arrival of the Melisans because they knew what was going to happen. Right? This legend suggests that the two of they done were what is referred to as the fairy folk in Ireland, or Es Shida, the people of the fairy mounds. Now, if you go around Ireland, you will see a lot of mounds, basically. They're burial mounds. But, according to legends, that's where the fairies lived. Right. Now there's another um, legend where it claims the two races did actually have a battle and the Melisans won. They took over Ireland and most of the races that were in Ireland, like the Fair Bullug and humans and stuff, all sided with them because they didn't like being ruled by until they done it. Uh, now what happened? After after the defeat, there's two legends. It, this is like a legend that splits into two. Right. And some say that the Ganas Danu sent him to live in Tirnanog. Now, I already did the legend of Tirnanog. If I can remember what video it's on, I'll stick a link up there if you want to find out about it. And a link below. Right. Um... And the other claims that the Millisans came to terms with sharing the land with Antua de Danon and allowed them yet again to go underground. So that's, as I said, it's just a quick one. Kind of fill in that little part of the story. And what I'll do next week is I'll go into how Antua de Danon turned in to the Irish fairies of legend. So I'll just finish doing this, stick the wax on it, and I'll be back in a sec. Right, there's the wax done and polished. Now I just put micro crystal and wax on this. I didn't put the high glass one. It was uh, the Hampshire Shane uh, micro crystal and wax again, certified to and tie safe. You know, I insist on that. Right then, now that you've got that side done, you're gonna get this ready to do the other side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to part it off with enough thickness here to make sure that this side is going to stick out of the jaws. Right, so what I want to do is there. Just a little relief. Oh. Even though I'm using a diamond parting tool, the habit of putting relief cuts in still stays.
dropped it. Right. Now, just switch to the bigger jaws. That'll do another one, so there's no need to throw that out. So that's well wide enough to do another one. And switch to the bigger chuck. I don't want to squeeze it too hard because I don't want it, I want to try and not get the marks of this chuck into it. Right now, that's way too thick. And now all I gotta do is basically make this side look like that side. So I'll do that really quickly. And then I'll get back to why that center mark is I won't pardon. Right then. I'll just sand and finish that side to make the two sides match. Right then, that side's finished. So I'll just take it out of there. The two sides are roughly the same right now. Those two sides being exactly the same doesn't really matter. Right, just get them close. Right. The part that does matter is that dot. Right, I'll get this out of your way so we can see what I'm so you can see what I'm doing. Right now then, that dot that I said was very important. Right, that's the exact centrifugal center of this piece of wood right so if i draw a line through the middle of that through the middle of that dot it's going to be balanced everywhere but what i want to do is i want to go through that middle dot and mark a centimeter either side for america convert it to maybe half an inch or something like that right and then i want to get a good drill bit and drill those two holes out as neatly as I can that's not in straight clamp on the side of a jaw instead of in the middle of it Same in the other one. Right, so I have two holes drilled in it. And then I need a piece of string. Which I did bring out with me, I know I did. And we got this piece of string to go through those two holes. Now, don't use cheap string when you're doing this, um, because it will just disintegrate after a couple of minutes. And as I said, if you hang on to the end of the video, I'll show you a few variations of this thing. I have them made; they're behind me. Uh, it was when I was prototyping it. I made a few different variations, um, and did a few different things. So what I have, what I end up with, is a wooden disc with a loop of string through it. Now you do is you wind it up and pull. No, it wasn't balanced right. I am no actually no good at doing this. There we go. Right, 
and all you got to do is put pressure on the outside and it starts spinning and it will keep spinning as long as you keep pulling so it's out and in out and in now as i said i gave one of these to my 10 year old and he stopped watching the telly and played with this for hours and it's still playing with it i don't know what it is about these things but they're fascinating right i'll show you the different variations now and uh, you can make it do different things so i'll set up to show you this and i'll be back in a second right and as i said there's a few variations of these things right that's the one i just made it's a plain one right if you put colors on them when you spin them right, you might have to stay with me on this because as i said i'm not very good at starting these things off Right. when you spin them you can get really cool color combinations right. and then if you drill holes in them you can get really cool noises out of them all right this one now i haven't bothered finishing these as i said these were just prototypes i was working around with this one has holes drilled along the edges right. wind it up Ooh, is it? and it gives you that noise And then this one I've drilled two big holes in. And it gives you another noise. So you can play around with the design on this so that you can get it to do different things. Let's see if I can get this one to work first time. Yes. Much louder noise after this one. You, know, you can make these very quickly if you didn't want to finish them like i did in that one all right you can make them really quick they're a fun little toy i don't know how well they sell because i haven't tried them on the stall yet but uh i said it's a it's a good project especially for beginners right just so that you have something at the end of it it'll help with your tool control and everything else and um, if you don't have a big jaw then just clamp it in your small one just cut it to fit your small jaws just cut it to fit your two inch jaws at their widest it'll still work right so if you enjoyed that one if you got out and out of it if you wouldn't mind clicking like on the video it really helps the channel out and i'll see you in the next one